Good afternoon from Porsche Ocala. I'm Scotty, one of the Porsche product pros over here. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to set the settings on your 2023 Porsche Macan. Of course, this can be quite an extensive list and honestly, it can be a little bit daunting of a process if you're not familiar with what settings do what. So today we're gonna to be discussing how to do it and I have some tricks to make things a little bit easier. So we've already uploaded the video on how to operate a lot of things on the Macan. You're gonna hear me multiple times referencing this new video that I'm making over here on the settings of the car. But the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is separate the keys. And by separate the keys, I mean have one key on your person, not another one inside the car, lock that other key inside the house somewhere, put it away at least 10 feet away from the car. Because how the car determines whose settings to go to, it's who unlocks the car. Not whoever gets in, not whoever starts it, it's whoever unlocks it with their key. So the first thing we're gonna do is of course, unlock the car. And if you've watched the other video, we already know how to unlock the car, either by pulling out the key and manually doing it with my little button right over here, or of course, reaching for the door handle right over here. So as we get inside the car, there's a lot of settings we're gonna discuss. We've already seen how to adjust the seat settings and everything like that. And of course the mirrors. And of course, depending on your year, you may have an electronic steering column or of course the manual one due to the chip shortages and that's perfectly okay. So we're gonna get inside the car and start right off the bat. Once we're inside the car, we're gonna turn it on. Since this is the only key inside the car, I in fact have the other one outside and we're gonna come back to that shortly. The first thing we're gonna do, of course, is get our seats, mirrors, and steering wheel all where you want them. And of course, we already know how to do that for the mirrors, the steering wheel, and the seats are, of course, down below right over here. Once you have everything where you want it, this is where things can become a little interesting. We're going to keep things easy for now, and we're just going to go set in one, if you're assuming you're the primary driver. We're going to be discussing that a little bit more over here in just a moment. But now we're going to start setting some settings. Now, there's settings located in this screen and this screen, and we're going to do both. So to control this screen right over here, we're going to use a combination of this wheel and this little back button right over here. And I've done this quite a bit, so if I go a little fast, I am going to try to slow it down for you. But we have all these different pages right over here, torque split, tire pressure monitoring system, trip computers, navigation, map. The first one we're gonna do is on map. So we're gonna push in this little wheel that's right over here, push it in like a little button, and we're gonna select 3D map, unless you do prefer the north map. Also make sure auto zoom is checkmarked and we're gonna back out of there. There we go. From there, we're gonna scroll up until we get to this page called vehicle. Now the vehicle page is gonna be where the majority of the stuff is at. So we're gonna push in our button, spin it down to settings and push it in again. Now we're gonna go right down the line. The easiest way to know how to navigate all your settings is to go in the order of enter your car. We're gonna have the headlights and automatic, of course, right over there, no problems there. Uh, our cruise control, we're gonna have that kind of in a standby mode right over there. Just focus left to right, and everything becomes easy. So from here, we're gonna start off with displays. Upper line, we want that to be fuel range is checkmarked. Definitely want that. Vehicle menu, you just wanna make sure this page is customized to your liking. What I like to see is coolant temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, and one of two things down over here where it says no display is I like to either have it as a compass, if you care about the compass, or battery voltage. I'm a sucker for battery voltage. I like to know the things that are going on in the vehicle, but maybe you're not as technical, and really it's not that important. If something's wrong with the car, it tells you. So you can change these to whatever you wish. So once you select it, you back out of there, and you can see I could change this over to something else if I wanted to, it's no problems. Customize it to your liking. Once you have it saved and everything where you want it, or once you have everything where you want it, just back out of there, it saves it. We're gonna come down over here to lower line and just make sure time and temperature is selected. Menu scope. Just make sure everything is checkmarked. That's it, everything is checkmarked. And back out of there again, using our little back arrow. PCM display, everything is checkmarked. Make sure of that, because a lot of these won't be. Brightness, I leave it at 80%. I don't touch that. And then I also turn off the help text, which are those little blue pop-ups that are a little aggravating, especially when you're trying to just do stuff on the car. They can be a little distracting. And then we back out, date and time, make sure that's set for automatic if the car, which of course being a 2023, depending on your region, should come standard with navigation, so this should already be an option, and make sure time chrono is set. That means that the time shows over here. So we want both those checked. 
Assist systems, now this can be quite drastic depending on options, of course. Now that Active Cruise Control standard, Active Safe is gonna be here, and you wanna make sure system on and collision with uh, alert essentially is on as well. So both of those check marks. Lane change assist, I like to have that on, obviously. That's your blind spot assistant with the brightness set on high. So I would push that in if I wanted to set it somewhere else and select the one that I want. Lane departure warning, this one's a matter of preference. I prefer it set to late. Some people prefer it set to medium or even early. If you have a tendency to water from a lane or maybe get a little distracted while on a cell phone, maybe set that a little bit earlier. And the warning volume, I set it on medium as well. And then we back out of there. Individual, this is a big one once again, depending on options. If you have sports chrono, means that you have this little dial right over here. All I do in this little section is I come over here where it says this little A symbol, check mark that, and I back out. That's it. Now, what that means is individual, uh, it, whenever you go into that mode, it's just not going to shut off at a red light. But luckily, my cons have a little button right over here. Once again, we're going to talk about that. Right now, we're just going through these settings. Lights and visibility, exterior lights, have that set for 30 seconds. And if you have, of course, the PDLS Plus, high beam assistant. Interior lights, I don't mess with any of this, 40% and 120 seconds. Pretty good. Wipers, rear wiper, have it set to automatic. So once again, if you're just watching what I'm doing with these little buttons, reverse option, I like to turn this on sometimes, but for now, for the sake of the video, we're not gonna do it because if you turn this on, I would like to do this personally if you're here with me and doing the delivery, because you have to adjust the rear mirror while you're in reverse so it goes to the right location. Otherwise, don't check mark this. So do not check mark that. Locking, door unlock. Now this is a matter of preference, once again, when you unlock the car, either via the key or reaching for the door handle, do you want just your driver's door to open or all the doors? I prefer all the doors, so I'm gonna select that and then back out. Door lock, I like to have it after drive away. So as soon as you start driving, it locks the car. Mirror retract means as soon as you lock the car, the mirrors are gonna fold in. And auto memory means when I unlock the car with my key, the one that we displayed at the beginning of the video, it's gonna go to my seats automatically. There could be another option in there for comfort entry. If you have that one, check mark it. Once again, depending on options, things have gotten a little interesting with the chip shortages. Air conditioning, airflow, medium, and auto air circulation on as well. That's the one that if you get behind like a diesel truck that maybe doesn't, not spitting out the cleanest of air there, it's going to turn on air circulation for you. Essentially, the car is smelling the air, looking for high levels of pollutants, allergens, smoke, stuff like that, and turns it on for you. So you want that. Steering wheel option, this is a matter of preference. That's what this little button does. And this is programmable. This is a programmable button, and this section allows me to choose what I want to program it to. So what I like to do is come into PCM function and set it to repeat instruction. So when I hit this little button right here, it's gonna repeat whatever the navigation system said to me. So if I'm traveling along the highway and it said take exit 350 and I didn't hear what she said, I would hit this little button and it would repeat the direction. So it just makes things a whole lot easier. From there, we're gonna back out and we're almost done. Volume, I don't mess with anything in here. I keep it on low to medium. Warning tones, medium. Units, of course, set this to however you wish. We're in the United States, so we have this set to miles per hour, but some people prefer kilometers. Temperature, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Pressure, PSI. Consumption, MPG US, or of course, wherever you are. That's all a matter of preference. Language is right over here. You can change this between quite a multitude of different languages, which is really nice. Select the one you want and back out. You're good to go. From there, we're just gonna fully back out because we are done with the most difficult section of the car, is that. Now what we're gonna do, now this doesn't have to be done in any particular order, but what I always like to do is per section, I like to come over here and we're gonna go set to the key. Now what this does is we set it to number one. That's just basic seats, mirrors, and steering wheel to the old style of if you get into your car, you want the seat to go to you, you would have to press and hold number one. But anytime we set it to the key, you're telling it that when I unlock the car with my key, I want to go to this settings automatically, including the seats, mirrors, AC, settings over here, settings in here. Every setting, every major section that I set the settings, I like to come back over here and go set to the key. And you can only do that when one key 
is set in the car, is in the car at the time. So very keen. Remember I said we need to separate those keys? We can only do that when we have one key inside the car at the time. We're going to continue on because now we have that. We're going to come over here to the windshield wipers. Now the windshield wipers, what we're going to do if we want to turn those on, I have the key right over there so I can't fully turn them on. We're going to flick this little bugger up to one tick higher and then lift this up one position. If you have the automatic windshield wipers, that means they're in automatic now. You don't have to worry about a thing. You can tell if you have automatic windshield wipers because if you see that little green dot underneath your mirror, that means you have them. Very simple. That's it because it comes with as a package of the auto dimming mirrors as well. When we come down to the AC, there's really not much to set over here. I like it to be room temperature, auto rest, 72 degrees, sync, that's it. And that synchronize just means everything is going to match to whatever I have on the driver's side. That's it. So once again, set to the key. I'm going to be doing that a lot because I really want to iterate the importance of that to you. If you don't have the set and key over here, you don't have to worry about it because it's going to set it to whatever you were last using. Once again, depending on equipment, things can change. But now we get into the infotainment system. And this is one of my favorite parts to customize because this is where my bread and butter is at right over here. So we're going to start off on the little home page right here. Now we're going to hit the little hamburger. I'm going to be referencing these by shapes. And that's that little guy. And we're going to hit configure home. This can take some getting used to. So what I like to do is this is how the default layout right over here is. I'm going to wipe out everything and just assume I'm starting blank. Just to help you guys out, of course. So I'm just grabbing and dragging it way off to the side. That's how you delete a tile. Oops, if I can grab it. And I like to start with layout one of three, as you see that right over there. The first thing I'm gonna go ahead and grab is media. So I press and hold it with my finger and I drag it right over here. Very simple. The next one I'm gonna start out with is navigation. So once again, I'm grabbing it. So I don't know if you're seeing that. And I put it right over here. I'm going to grab another navigation and put it on the two by one. See this little square right over here that looks like a two by one right there? So that's a one by one. This is a two by one. So I'm putting it up into that one right over there. Or this one, it doesn't matter. It makes no difference. I'm going to grab a third navigation and drag that to one of the one by ones like that. From there, I'm going to grab vehicle and drag that over here. And you can see there's actually little switchable tiles. So I, I want to see the date and time one. So I see I can swipe that. I want to see the date and time and altitude right there. The last one I'm going to grab, and this is a matter of preference, whether you use Apple CarPlay or normal telephone. If you use normal telephone, you're going to grab the phone one and drag that over here. But if you use Apple CarPlay more, you're going to grab the Apple CarPlay one and drag it right there to give you an easier way to access Apple CarPlay. So I'm going to grab phone because... I don't like Apple CarPlay. Now that we have this all customized, we're good to go. But one thing I also want to show you is I can move these tiles around because if they're shifted in different places, that's okay. Just grab them and move them around to your own personal preference. I like to have it like this. My non-important stuff right there and my navigation stuff in a nice line. Looks like I'm losing a little bit of lighting, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on to maybe help out a little bit. So there we go. From there, once again, we've already been over the instructions of the car, so we're not going to really spend much time over there, but that's done customizing the home page. Now we're going to come to navigation, and we're going to start off from this page right here. What I like to do is I like to come over to the little slices of cheese. Once again, I'm going to keep referencing food. And we're going to see 3D map, auto zoom. You want to make sure those are on. I don't like to mess with satellite map or compass because it's not that important and show POI, which is points of interest is on as well. That means we'll see like the banks and stuff like that. Then I'm going to hit the hamburger, which is the little one next to it. See this little guy right there with a the little arrow. And we're going to come to route options and make sure fast is on with dynamic reroute. I'm going to come to navigation settings and I shouldn't have to mess with anything in over here, but if you ever want to uh, update the navigation volume or like turn it up or anything like that, you're going to come over here and turn it up with the volume or the plus and minus. That's it. I'm going to back out of there. I can do this multiple ways. I can hit the little arrow or I can just touch anywhere and it gets me out of it. That's the navigation settings. Moving on. Once again, remember how I said left to right and then we're going to go up and down. So we're going to come to media. Media is a very easy page because all we're going to really do is adjust the treble to base. I'm going to hit the little hamburger every time I want option. I hit the little hamburger or I can even hit the little option right over there, but I like the hamburger. 
we're going to come over here to tuner settings first and make sure everything is on. Additional online data and HD radio content is on. That's it. Very simple. We're going to hit the hamburger again and hit sound settings. And this is where we have the balance, treble, fader, so on and so forth. Once again, depending on equipment, things can be a little different. I like to give it a little rear fade. So we can grab this and just move it to a down arrow one with zero balance. That just gives it a little bit of rear fade. We're going to come to tone. This is a big time matter of preference. I like to have minus two for treble, plus two for bass. Bose, I come in here, depending on equipment, you could have Burmeister, you could have Bose, or you can have the standard uh, stereo. You just want to make sure everything is checkmarked. The Burmeister system is going to be a little bit different, and what you see might be different than what you see over here. Once again, this is all matter of preference, and that whatever you think sounds the best, stick with it. It doesn't matter. Hooking up the phone, things can get a little more interesting. So we're going to show you how to hook up the phone. Now, I have an Android phone. Somebody gave me a little call over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings on my phone. And on Android, part of my reach here, we're going to come right over here. And I'm going to hold this. I'm just getting to my settings for Bluetooth. So now I'm on the Bluetooth page that tells me, okay, well, it's searching for devices. Ah, I see Porsche BT6067. But I'm going to set my phone right over here. And I'm going to hit search for new phone. My phone's te named Test001. And I'm going to hit that. And now I'm going to have some prompts on both the phone and the car. This is saying confirm the code. I'm just hitting okie dokie over here. Allow for contacts. Allow for messaging. I don't like doing text messages while driving, so I deny that. But once again, it's preference. Usually you're going to hit yes to all messages. If you want Apple CarPlay and you're doing this via an Apple phone, you're going to say yes to CarPlay or no to CarPlay if you don't want it. From here, the phone's hooked up. That's it. Instructions are easy. Keypad, nav, calls, contacts. We're not going to go past that because this is setup video. The next page we're going to go under is apps. Now, apps is going to utilize the My Porsche account that hopefully the dealership you bought it from set it up for you. Once again, this is very difficult to, to talk about over the phone. Essentially, they're going to create an account for you that you're going to be emailed a confirmation saying, congratulations on your new Macan or your new Porsche. You're going to go through that setup process. Hopefully, they walk you through it as they should because it can be a little, a little interesting of a process, creating your password and everything like that. And you're going to be routed uh, to your main page. On that page that shows you your newly purchased car, you're going to see about my vehicle. Once you click on that page, you're going to see a little symbol that looks like an infinity towards the top. You're going to hit that. It's going to have a pairing code. Once again, this gets a little interesting. We're going to hit our hamburger again, Porsche ID settings, and we're going to hit link new Porsche ID and enter in that eight-digit code. Now, what I like to do is once you've entered the eight-digit code, it's going to ask you about storing the destinations. Hit, yep, that's no problems there. This isn't really that important, folks, so you don't have to really worry about this part. Feel free to skip this sections around here. And then when it asks you to store it, I like to store it to the Bluetooth ID, the Bluetooth device, and I select my phone. But if you use Apple CarPlay, you can't do that. So you're going to save it to manual login without pairing code. That's it. You're done. That's probably the most difficult setup on the whole car is right there. From there, we're going to scroll down, and we already adjusted the sound for treble and bass. We don't have to worry about any of that. We're going to come down here to settings. There isn't much to do in here. All we're going to do is come to display, turn off proximity sensor, and turn on touch tone settings. That's it. Folks, that's all the settings I do inside of a car. That's it. There's little tidbits we're going to mention on the outside, very small, minor things. But as we remember, we have everything set in this section. We're coming back on over here and setting it to the key. That means the settings are done on this key entirely. But I have some tricks. Because otherwise, we would have to do that all over again for the second key. I don't want to do that. I like to save some time. So what I like to do is I'll turn off the car. Kick the ignition back on. No foot in the brake or anything like that. I'm just going to turn it on like that. Leave it like that. Take the key that I'm working with out of the car. Leave the door open. This is a weird process. This is kind of a little east, like a little cheaty Easter egg that I discovered a couple years back. 
and I'm gonna swap the keys. So I have this key here. I'm grabbing my other key. You can tell this one's different because I have the plastic tag on it. And I'm coming back into the car. I unlock it. I hop back in. All this time, my radio and everything's still on. And all I'm gonna do is set it to the key again. And you'll hear it. It doesn't beep, it doesn't do anything. So I turn off the car, unlock it again. Once again, this process is a little finicky. I turn it back on again, set it to the key. And as soon as it stops beeping, this time you'll hear an auditory beep. You don't have to do it as many times as I did. I just keep doing it until I hear the auditory boop sound that the car makes when you've done it right. The only problem that you're gonna have is you just gotta readjust the AC and sync it back up. But everything, every other setting that we've set in the car is now duplicated, which is fantastic. It saves me about 10 minutes. So now we can turn off the car and the keys are set. That's the most difficult part about setting up the Macans. The last little setting that we're gonna have on the car is one that of course is gonna be a pretty big problem if you have a low roofed garage or carport or something like that. So we're gonna learn how to adjust the height on the tailgate. So from here, we're gonna pop our tailgate using that little button. And if you need to stop it, go ahead and grab it. At any time, you'll hear a beep telling you, hey, something stopped it, that's okay, perfectly fine. Move the tailgate to the height that you want it to open, like so. And you're gonna press and hold this button right here. You'll get a little upbeat tone that goes do do do. And that tells you now, if I were to pop the trunk, it's only gonna open up to that height. So if I do that now, it stops where I chose it to stop. And that's it. So very useful if you have a low garage. And folks, that does conclude this video. I know it's another 20 minute video, but I thought it's a better idea to break these videos apart from how to work the car and how to set it up. It all depends because once again, the settings are all a matter of preference. And a lot of times you don't have to set anything. Just deal with what you have. But this really does help people because these are the settings I do in every delivery for a customer that picks up their Macan. And I thought it'd help you guys out. Hope you're having a great day, folks. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.